Welcome back. Time for another episode. Says Pipeline Radio. So grab your board. We're going to swim out into that sea of ideas with uh, Matt Hines, who's coming to us remotely here today. Hey, Matt. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you listening on podcast feed, thank you so much for subscribing. You can find every current, past, and present episode of Sales Pipeline Radio at salespipelineradio.com. Every week, we are featuring some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing. Today is absolutely no different. I am extremely excited to have with us today Alex Schutman. He is the CEO of Workfront. I got to know him very well back in uh, the Eloqua days. We got so many topics we can cover, Alex, but we want to talk about the book, uh, Done Right, How Tomorrow's Top Leaders Get Work Done. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Matt, it is great to be here. And as always, it's great to work with you. Thank you for that. And I was uh, I was mentioning to you, you know, just as in our prep here, that um, your name comes up very often from people when we ask them at the end of interviews for Sales Pipeline Radio, we ask them, you know, who's someone or a couple people that have had a big impact for you in your life and your career career. And the name Alex Schutman comes up a lot, especially people that have worked with you in past roles that were part of the Eloqua team up and through going public. And one topic that comes up a lot is something that you shared with me. And I've heard many, many people that you work with quote as well. And it's a big part of this book done right. And it's the idea of hitting your number and doing it the right way and how you think about the answer to those questions and what it means for the people in your organization. So let's start off by maybe just giving people an overview of what that what that philosophy is like for you. You know, one of the things that we talked a lot about at Eloqua, we talk a lot about here at uh, Workfront is this notion of getting it done and doing it right. And mentally, if you think about a two by two grid with a vertical axis being getting it done and a horizontal axis being doing it right, it's the notion of, you know, the vertical axis is low to high. Are, are you getting it done? Are you not getting it done? Doing it right is, are you living up to the values of an organization or are you not living up to the values of an organization? And it's this notion of, if you're not getting it done, not doing it right, it's probably not a great place for you. If you're doing it right, but you're not getting it done, you have the values of the organization, but you might need some coaching on how to objectively accomplish the role that you've been given. If you're getting it done and you're doing it right, you're the person that everybody ought to see their name and lights. And the tough one is if you're getting it done, but you're not doing it right, you probably ought to be fired faster than anybody in the organization because nothing destroys the pursuit of the culture that you want in a company faster than being willing to uh, tolerate people who can accomplish their goals, but don't live up to the values of the organization. So that's the notion we shared. And what I found over time is, you know, I believe people are good and people want to do the right thing. A lot of times they just haven't been given the space to put a premium on values. I love your explanation uh, of all that. I think it, it makes a ton of sense. And, uh, you know, I think it sometimes, you know, falls into the category of easier said than done, right? But I think people hear that, yeah, you know, if they're hitting the number, not doing the right way, we want to maintain culture. When the rubber meets the road, I've seen many organizations uh, struggle with that a little bit. Because, you know, sometimes you'll have some of your best performers, you know, perhaps in a sales or business development role, hitting their number, supporting the sales or you know, sales numbers, Um and, you know, sometimes it's, it's, you turn a blind eye to the way that they're doing it, either internally or externally. But as you know well, and as we've all seen many times in the market, you know, that is a poisonous thing to allow to continue in the organization. And one thing you mentioned is you don't just fire them, but you fire them quit more quickly than anybody else. Talk a little bit about the cultural impact of doing that or not doing that and how that very quickly changes trajectories of businesses? Well, I think the the one thing we have to remember is, you know, we're talking about B2B. And and so my my main perspective comes from a lot of years in the B2B technology space. And, And what you find as you go through the years is that the world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And customers have a very, very long memory. And so I think the biggest impact is you know, if you're willing to do the wrong thing uh, to bring in revenue, uh, your customers will notice sooner or later. And yeah, you might make the quarter, but you're not going to make the decade because over time, customers want to do business with people that are invested uh, in their success. And so I think that's the biggest impact. A lot of B2B sellers, they live in a market. 
You know, you're a B2B player. You live in Chicago. You're making your career and your reputation matters. And over time, what you what you're really trading on is your reputation in market, not the firm. You are not alone in this thought. I think, you know, I appreciate what you've done to codify a lot of it in your new book, Done Right. But, you know, this book is based on over 30 interviews with leaders across a variety of industries to share a common philosophy around this. And, and I imagine that, you know, your philosophy here is born out of your values, but also born out of some of the leaders you learn from. Talk a little bit about some of the companies that you spoke with and that you put into this book that have also put this this philosophy in practice. To be clear, what the, what the book is specifically about is the challenge of getting stuff done in a modern work environment. So at Workfront, you know, much like Salesforce, automates sales and Workday automates uh, human capital management. Workfront automates knowledge work in an organization. And so our customers have been faced with the challenge of getting stuff done in amongst the turmoil of all of the digital transformation that's occurring. And so when we would sit down with our customers after we talk about our technology, they, they kind of ask this basic question of, okay, that's great, but how do I actually get stuff done in a complex organization? And we kept hearing that, and that's what we decided to write a book upon. And so we did. We interviewed 40 different people, many of them customers, some of them leaders in their own field, Navy SEAL commanders, uh, Deborah Cyril, who was the first woman to row solo across the Atlantic. And we asked them a basic question, which was, how do you actually get stuff done? And their answers are what we translated into this book, which are just some basic principles of how you get stuff done. Well, I think that, you know, that environment that people are facing that sort of certainly includes internal and external factors makes, you know, well-meaning businesses, you know, face a number of challenges to execute. Talk, talk a little bit about, I mean, I know it's, you know, not surprising to see, you know, your pro- career progress into a CEO role, but also not surprising to see it at a company like Workfront that puts such a focus on helping to manage people effectively. Talk a little bit about what attracted you to Workfront. We're talking to Alex Schutman today. He is the CEO of Workfront and the author of the new book, Done Right. Talk a little bit about why you chose Workfront as the next stage of your career and and why the work they're doing has been so important. Well, you know, I've been very fortunate to be at uh, different companies that have created categories going back to uh, BSM at BMC, which was the precursor to ITSM. Uh, as you mentioned, being fortunate to be at Eloqua, uh, which was all about marketing automation, being fortunate to be at Aptio, which was TBM. And, um, and so because of that, you start to see some pattern recognition. And the pattern rec- recognition that I could see is that all categories are born from an external pressure that is a huge external pressure. If you think about Eloqua, you know, uh, it was B2B marketers who were starting to realize that the way marketing was going to be executed was was completely going to be impacted by the digitization of consumer marketing. So here at Workfront, what we see is that 8% of CEOs believe that their current business model is going to survive. And so they do what CEOs do. They spend a lot of money, over $1.7 trillion this year on digital transformation, and they don't achieve their intended results because they need multiple groups of people to work together effectively, the product team, with the technology team, with the marketing, with the distribution team. And so what I could see from Workfront is ported the transformation efforts inside their enterprise. And so that's why I, I came to Workfront. Yeah, just a couple of minutes before I take a break with Alex Schutman, the CEO of Workfront. And, you know, what I love about this book you've written is not just that it's got a great, a lot of great uh, advice, but it also, it's got a number of tools that allow people to start to put these uh, ideas into practice right at the very beginning of the book before you even get into it. There's this exercise workflow that, you know, sort of is this progression going from sort of your vision statement into how you are working and managing and, and, and responding to what happens in the business and in the market. And, you can download a lot of it just at downrightbook.com to a more specific sort of operational exercise level. Love it. We got to take a quick break, pay some bills. We'll be right back uh, with more with Alex Schutman. We'll be talking a little more about some of the components of the done right workflow, including making sure you've got the right foundational pieces in place and then have the tools and the strategies to make adjustments along the way. We'll be right back on this episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. 
The way we do business is advancing faster than ever before. Yet amongst the disruptions, there's one pillar that stays standing through it all, the power of a relationship. Relationships are at the core of everything. So how are today's organizations developing, nurturing, and leveraging them to drive success? Join Matt Hines and Sigster's VP of Marketing, Justin Keller, for the on-demand webinar, The State of Relationship Marketing and learn how your team can bridge the gaps between relationships and revenue. Listen now at HeinzMarketing.com. That's H-E-I-N-Z Marketing.com. All right, let's pick it back up with Matt and the second part of his interview. Welcome back to Sales Platform Radio. Thanks so much for joining us today. Boy, I feel like we could go for an awful long time talking today to our guest today, Alex Schutman. He is the CEO of Workfront. He has run many companies. He was the president of Eloqua, uh, leading through the IPO and the acquisition by Oracle. He has been uh, on the board of numerous companies and is now uh, not only the CEO of Workfront, but also the author of the new book, Done Right. And before the break, Alex, we were talking about this exercise workflow. And there's so many great sort of tools in here. I feel like even if people don't take the entire toolkit and workflow, there's components that are really, really important. One at the very end of the workflow, you call the done right value pyramid. Can you talk a little bit about what that is and, and how people can put that into practice? Yeah, what what we actually do at the very end is, is each chapter is a building block, basically in terms of building a work plan that allows you to be, to be successful in executing work. And so starting from the very beginning of, uh, are you able to explain to people why you're doing the task that you're doing. You know, why are you pursuing the work that you're doing through to uh, who are you serving, right? Who is the financial beneficiary of the work? Who actually has to do the work? Uh, Who gets served by the work? And so every single chapter builds on, uh, builds on each other uh, until you have an overall work plan. And so what that final chapter is in terms of all of the Lego blocks that come together to say, if you've done all these things, you are now in a position to effectively execute work. I love that. And I think you can definitely get a copy of these exercises, learn more about the pyramid at, uh, at the website. Hold on one second. The website, donerightbook.com. The other thing that was really interesting to me, and it's mentioned a couple times in the book, is this idea of commander's intent. And, and I, I love the idea of sort of having a strong sort of objective and intent up front. Talk a little bit about what that means from your perspective and then how you manage that in a work environment that tends to be maybe a little less autocratic in many companies than used to be. Like, how does that work? How do those things work together? Well, you know, first of all, I learned commander's intent from a, a friend of mine, Commander Mark McGinnis, who had uh, spent, uh, he spent over 20 years in the Navy SEALs. And the actual notion of commander's intent is not to be, or not to be democratic, right? So the, the notion of commander's intent is, as Mark taught me, as the leader, my role is to explain uh, what we're trying to accomplish. But then my next job is to get out of the way because you're really smart and you ought to be able to come up with approaches to accomplishing the task at hand. If you can turn it over to your team to figure out the how. So commander's intent is is not meant to be autocratic. It's actually meant to create a lot of freedom in a dynamic work environment. I found it's your point is that a lot of times, even though people, you know, don't want to be sort of told what to do as a command, they want to know where their work is coming from. They want a strong leader that can tell them, here's where we're going, here's how we're going to do it. And and I think that gets back to sort of this idea of doing work the right way. And you mentioned earlier that people generally are good and are willing to do the right thing. How do you as an employee, how do you as someone working and managing your career, try to find organizations that are doing the the right thing. I mean, it's one thing to look at what people's values are on their website or maybe on the walls, but how do you truly find evidence of companies that are going to live those values and sort of live the intent you have in the book here when you haven't been able to sort of spend time living and breathing that culture? Well, I mean, it depends upon the size of the organization, but what I would look for is like if you came to Workfront, um, I would, and I, if I was uh, interviewing at Workfront, I would ask people, 
hey, uh, tell me who you tell me who you think is a really great employee uh, inside of Workfront. Tell me who has been recognized lately uh, for doing a great job inside of Workfront. Um, t- you know, tell me their names and then tell me some of their behaviors. And tell me if they were rewarded for those uh, for those behaviors because you see. This here's the thing about here's the thing about uh, culture, right? Culture is merely the external manifestation of a shared a shared set of values of a group of people. Much like behavior as an individual is merely the external manifestation of the beliefs of that individual. My wife and I have been together for 34 years. After 34 years, she does mostly know me, but she still doesn't know me completely. Uh, and the way that she forms her opinion of me is how I behave. How I behave is related to what I believe. And so I think if you go into a company and you ask people, who are the winners inside of the company and how do they behave and how do other people talk about the, the way that they behave, you'll start to pick up on some what that organization really values and doesn't value. Love it. Just a few more minutes here with uh, Alex Schutman, the CEO of Workfront. Uh, definitely encourage you to check out his book, Done Right, for the number of people that I've heard uh, talk about just how much they've learned from Alex on leadership and on culture and just doing things the right way in organizations. This book codifies a lot of that. So definitely encourage you to check it out. You can get a copy, learn more at donerightbook.com. And Alex, I think, you know, I want to kind of end where we started. You know, I mentioned to you how many people we've interviewed on this show that have mentioned you as, a, as an inspiration in their career. Who are some people that you have looked to that have been inspirational for you? People that um, either have been managers in the past, uh, sort of, you know, mentors, they can be authors, they can be alive or dead. Who are the people that have meant a lot to you that maybe you recommend other people to seek out and learn from as well? Well, one for sure is Bill Miller. Bill is currently at BMC Software, and Bill actually hired me into IBM a million years ago. and And uh, Bill was the Bill was the person that taught me that there's a right way to do things, and that it's worth doing things the right way. So my first boss ever was just a great uh, fingerprint on me that said, "There's no shortcuts, and you got to do the." do things the right way. Another person who was at BMC um, is, uh, he's now retired, is a guy named uh, Daryl Bettenhays. And Daryl took a big risk on me and asked me to, to do a pretty big job at BMC. Um, and then I'd say the last person, he's a board member today, and I feel like he was a partner when we were at Eloqua, uh, was uh, was Joe Payne. thing about Joe that I, that I just always that always stayed with me is you just cannot outrun your customers. You know, you have got to do a great job by your customers and your customers are your future reputation of Bill and Daryl and and Joe. And then finally, the acknowledgement of the book, a guy named Art Wilson, who was my mentor for years and many of the principles that are in the book, I learned, you know, late nights at Art's Ranch in, uh, in Bernie, Texas. It's hard for me to think about Joe Payne without imagining him or seeing him again in a spacesuit up on stage at Eloqua Experience. But, you know, his his lesson around sort of, you know, putting a greater focus on your customers could not reinforce that or so just reiterate so that more from an Eloqua standpoint. I mean, we were Eloqua customer, Eloqua partner, uh, you know, for a long time. And, you know, there aren't that many conferences you go to where you see more hugs than handshakes. And I've been to maybe three in my life. And, and one of those was every year at Eloqua Experience. It was the, the community that the company built. It was a relationship with customers. It was the culture that clearly you and Joe and others in the company had built uh, very successfully. Well, if you want to learn more about how to build that for yourself and in your organization, not just your sales and marketing team, but your overall organization, get a copy of Done Right. Uh, you can get, find more information at donerightbook.com. I want to thank our guest, Alex Schutman, for joining us today. If you want to learn more uh, about Alex. If you want to have a, share this episode with others in your organization, check out a copy on demand up at salespipelineradio.com shortly. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be here again next week. You've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio right here on the Funnel Radio Network for at work listeners like you. 